All right, are you ready for the word tonight? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen, turn on your Bible. Or open it up. I know what generation I'm talking to. Turn it on or open it up. Uh, I don't care what you read it on I just care that you read it and go to Luke chapter 5 Luke the 5th chapter some good looking people in here tonight oh, where, where are all the single people at where are you at single people Come on, yeah, people, you raising your hand real, real high. They're pointing at this guy, right? This guy looks like Jesus in the crowd. Stand up real quick. Stand up real quick. Stand up. Jesus wants to get the kinnikin. Are you single? How old are you? You're 30. Oh, he needs a wife in Jesus' name right now. I'd say you look like a Sri Lankan Jesus. Sit down. Sit down. You got a smile. Awesome, awesome. Are you there in Luke chapter 5? Okay. I t listen, I've I got to be honest with you. If I walk funny, it's, it's, I feel like I'm walking like a dinosaur right now. I, I had knee surgery about three months ago. So I feel like I'm walking like an elephant or something. So bear with me, okay? In Luke chapter 5, Jesus is in his headquartered uh, city of Capernaum. Now this is a famous passage of scripture. But many people believe that Jesus is in the house of Peter. And this is a, a significant moment in the life of of Jesus, Peter, but someone else. And I want to read Luke chapter 5 and verse 17. Follow along with me. Okay. It says, now it happened on a certain day. Can we just stop right there? I like this. Now it happened on a certain day. If, if this was a special day, the writer would tell us this was the Sabbath. Or it was during a feast. Or it was significant. But he just labels this as a normal day. And I can tell you what's going to bring revival to Sri Lanka. It's not when you have faith for special days. But when you start having faith for normal days. It's amazing what God can do in one day. It's amazing what God can do in one moment. So Luke the physician says this was just a normal day. It says as Jesus was teaching. There were Pharisees sitting in the house. In verse 17 says that they were listening and the power of God was there to heal them. But being religious, they weren't there to listen. They were there to judge. And so all of a sudden, in verse 18, men had climbed on the roof. And in verse 19, they lowered a man down through the roof. Tore a hole and lowered him in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw that this man had been lowered right in front of him, I mean, it probably was so quiet you could have heard people breathing. The Bible says it was a packed house. Nobody could get in. It was probably hot. Like it is tonight. Man, it is so hot on this stage. With all these 3,000 lights. I feel like a piece of chicken at KFC. It says they lowered Jesus right, or lowered this man right in front of Jesus. 
and he turns to this man and says, Son, oh, uh, your sins are forgiven. Well, all the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they got upset. And they said, who can forgive sins but God? So Jesus, being the strong man that he is, turns to them and says, you think I'm sinning because I'm healing on the Sabbath. But just so you know God has all authority, not only is this man's sins forgiven, but then he turns to the man he says son your sins are forgiven you arise take up your bed and go home and all the religious are shocked because this paralytic strength starts coming to his legs stands up on his feet grabs his bed and leaves to go, get, to go home. Is not Jesus the best person you could ever meet? Let's pray tonight. I want you to pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, I speak to this atmosphere and I say that you are full of faith and you are full of hope and you are full of peace and you are full of power and I come against every limit Limit, every restriction, every demonic harassment, every lie, every barrier, and I, I break it right now in Jesus' name. Father, I say that you would establish a burning heart inside of this room. Pour out your spirit in a fresh way. Father, I believe the time is now or never. We either choose revival in Sri Lanka now or never. Father, let the power of God flow through our lives. Father, I thank you for every man and every woman that they would encounter your radical presence your matchless mercy Father I tear down every veil I tear down every wall I come against every dividing line and I say Holy Spirit rush in like the river that you are we destroy the kingdom of darkness right now. and it's time to begin the conversation the Revival is not coming. Revival is here now. And that you would use to this weekend to purpose something inside of their hearts that they would destroy the works of the devil and release Jesus everywhere they go. I thank you for every man and every woman. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm calling this message, What Are You Carrying? What are you carrying? You know, I like that Jesus is sitting in this packed house. He says this man's lowered in front of him. What's interesting is, if this happened in our day, can you imagine someone cutting a hole in the roof of your house? Being lowered in front of Jesus. I mean, how would you memorialize this moment? I know what this generation would do. If you were the paralytic, 
You take your phone out and take a selfie with Jesus right there. I don't even know what hashtag you would use. You know, Jesus hangs. You know, lower through a roof, hashtag, whatever, lower through a roof. I, I love this verse because I've been the paralytic my wife and I have been married for 13 years we have four kids we have four I started a church not a family uh, I, uh, and before we had children we lived in Sri Lanka uh, I feel like I'm half Sri Lankan. I've been here so much. This is like my seventh or eighth time here. I used to live in Kandy. I love everything rice and curry. Give me, give me brinjal curry. Beef curry. Chicken curry. All kinds of curry. And people knew this about me. So I would get invited to people's homes a lot. One night, I'm in the middle Mama of someone's home and they cook this huge spread of food and they start feeding me rice I didn't even know you had different types of rice Sri Lankans have like 400 types of rice then they put curries and, and there's hot food and then there's Sri Lankan hot food you guys like swallow fire. And that's just that's just to start. So I start eating all of these curries. Then they give me a fruit salad. Then they give me hot Coca-Cola to drink. Then they give me ice cream. Then they give me cookies. Then they give me planters. Then they give me tea. Then they give me more biscuits. Another cup of tea. This is all in my little body. I remember that night. Have you ever been so sick that you lay on this side and your stomach is hurting? So you lay to this side so all the stuff can move on this side. So you get a little bit of relief. But then it starts hurting. So you got to go back around to this side and move it all around. I, I, I promise you, man, I, I, I'm telling you, I was felt like I was doing the nene in bed, you know. And I, I remember I, I, I was sitting there, and I'm telling you, I am, my stomach is hurting. I feel like, I feel like I'm nauseous, like I'm going to vomit. But I'm trying to go out the other end. But apparently someone put an out of order sign on that side. And I'm telling you, it was dry as a whistle. Ain't nothing working on this end. Have you ever spent the night on the toilet? There is no comfortable position to sleep in. I remember... We had to wake up early the next morning and come from, take the train from Candy to Colombo. I, I was with Pastor Bondula. And I remember, he said, are you okay? I said, there is nothing okay with me right now. He said, well, let's get, a, uh, let's get the first class cabin. It's a nice cabin. And they have, I think, he said, I think they have AC in this cabin. That was a lie. It was a nice cabin. Because it had all windows. But this is, this is in the middle of jungle heat. And so we're all sweating. And the, the AC 
was a fan that had been nailed into the roof of the van. Some of you are laughing because you know this train. I guarantee you this train is still there. So I'm, I feel like vomiting. I don't feel good. I'm in a volcano called the train. And I, finally I've had enough. I said, I've got to throw up. So Pastor Bonham said, well, go to the bathroom over there. So I go to the bathroom. I open the door. This ain't a nice bathroom. At all. It's literally a throne with a pipe. And I can see the track. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm thinking, I have too much pride to throw up in this. I have a preference on where I vomit. So you know these trains are packed. So I decide I'm going to open the door to the train. And I'm going to throw up off this train. Because I have no dignity right now. So, you know all, all the Sri Lankan men on the train. They're, they're all looking at me. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm moving them all out the way. Not open the door. And they're all. And I sit there and I get ready. I sit on the edge of this train. And I'm focused. I'm going to hit this. And I remember I stick my finger in my throat. And I remember. No, you got to do it louder. You have to do it louder. That wasn't loud enough. No, no, ready? Here, we'll do it together. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, good. That's pretty good. That's, I want you to work on it there. Okay. All right, so. I, I start throwing up off this train. I'm excited. Because I finally have these demons coming out of me. But I forgot that people have their windows rolled down. So Pastor Bondal is in the car. People are sitting there. And I'm like, and people are sitting there and all of a sudden they feel. I didn't care. Because I'm being delivered. The only person that knew what was going on is Pastor Bandula. And he's on the other side of the train oh. laughing at all the people that are getting thrown up on. This is my life. I'm always in awkward situations. That I, I continue to vomit. And I remember all of a sudden I notice another track is on the other side. And as I'm, I'm not stopping vomiting all of a sudden this man appears under me. And then I look down. There's a whole group of guys working on this track. And I remember this fresh gusher just come up. But I, I can neither confirm nor deny that I aimed for this man. I remember. And this guy looks at me and all the fear in his life came on his face and I remember I caught him right there on the face I didn't care I, I'm pretty sure there's a wanted sign with my face on it somewhere. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel powerless? Where you didn't have much control? I, I, I wish somebody would have taught me how to recognize good and bad decisions. Good and bad relationships. Good and bad life choices. I wish somebody would have told me now, now Chris, you don't want to eat all that curry. 
දැන් ඔබ මේ ඔක්කොම මේ කොදි කන් දෙපා කියලා මට ක්‍රිස් කියලා කවුරු කිව්වනේ? You don't want drink all of that tea. ඔයා ඔච්චර තේ බොන් දෙපා කියලා කවුරු හරි මට කිව්වා නම්. If you do that you're going to be up all night. ඕක ඔයා එහෙම කරොත් ඉන්නවා මුළු රෑම ඇරලා තමයි ඉන්නේ. There's going to be an out of order sign on your body. ඒ කියන්නේ ඔයාගේ අමුතු ගඳකුත් එන්න යනවා හැඟෙන්. And you're going to be throwing up off a train tomorrow. ඔයා වමනේ දදා තමයි යන්න යන්නේ. I really wish somebody would have told me that. කවුරු හරි මට ඒක කිව්වා නම්. I, I really feel like this generation Mata hangenawa me paramparawa has to understand meka therun ganna what they're carrying may not be from heaven on osawa gena thiyena de swargen nowenna puluwa my question to you tonight is what are you carrying mage prashne meka oba mukadda daragena yanne because it'll decide your whole life eka thama obage jeevithaye thirna wenne i didn't know i was carrying something that was going to make me sick mama denan hitiye na mage tula thibuna asaneepa wena deyak don't you wish somebody would have told you Don't date that boy or girl. Oba santosha wenna nabba obata eka naraka sambandhawakin kawura obata kiwwa nam prathamai ya eka yanne pa eliyata. Don't you wish somebody would have stopped you? Oba santosha weine kawura ri oba kal thiyala nawathuwana. Somebody would have helped you. Obata yam upadesak dunna na. My question is you came here tonight. Mage prashne meka oba me raathri aawa. Maybe you came with the church. Oba sabawa ekka aawa. Or a friend invited you and this is your first time in a church. Ema nattang oba yalu ek nisa aawa oba me thanta aapu palaweni wathawa. But what are you carrying in your heart? Habe oba ge hadawata ඔබ උස්ලා ගන්න මොකද්ද what should be there and what should not be there දැන් මොකද්ද තියෙන්න ඕනේ මොකද්ද ඉවත් කරන්න ඕනේ if you're going to find out what you're carrying ඔබ දැනගත්ත නම් ඔබ ඔසවන දේ let me give you three things මෙන්න දේවල් තුනයි ඔබට number 1 පළවෙනි දේ in order to find out what you're carrying ඔබ උස්ලා ගන්න දේ කුමක්ද කියලා දැනගන්න පිණිස Jesus be lowered into your heart tonight ඒ ක්‍රිස්තුස් වහන්සේ ඔබේ හදවතට ඇතුල් වෙන්න ඕනේ Can Jesus be responsible for your heart tonight? Christus swamin wahanse obage hadabate e wagakima bara gandone. I remember one time I was in Rio de Janeiro Brazil. Ma Rio de Janeiro wala Brasile hitiya. I was preaching at a massive conference. Loku sammailana ka katha karana. I'm standing on the stage. Mama metana hitagen inna deshana kudu gawa. People start getting healed and delivered all over the building. Minisu sue labanawa nidahasa labanawa hama tanama. There's thousands of people at this altar. Das kala minisu wenawa altar wata. And I remember something they had told me. Mata mata kuna on kiwa mata ek yam deyak. When I had landed, mama etan daava ma. I was leaving the airport. Mama ya airport ke indala gwa. I saw this big billboard with my face on it. Mama dakka mage moona daapu loku then we mak. And I was smiling like this. Ma me walu hina. Is the worst picture ever. E kiyanne mama mage man gena dakka antima pinturi. And I remember mata mata kai. They had said that this International healing man was coming. Oon dala ti bunai then we me jati antara suwa karanna. Jackson, I didn't even know I was that. Mama thana ngiti na mata eva ke eva puluang ke. So I, I remember, I, I I said, wow, I can't believe you have billboards. Man kiwa ha man thana mekchira then we puru then magira. Of my face. Mage moon ab dala. And they said, yeah, it's kind of caused the problem. Eka thamai kiwa prashnya kati buna. I said, what do you mean? Man ke mukat the prashni. I said, I ain't that ugly. Mama mekchira kata na. And they said, well. There was a satanist group that said then etana hitiya e yakshanta namaskar karana kandayama if he comes to rio we're going to kill him oh rio walta avathin yawa maranna yanawa kiyala so i said wow manke amme wow that's something you want to tell me before i come ai oya mata eka kiwwe natte welassani like shoot me an email oh we to man enda isara kiyanna thibulane signo natta mata mona hari kiyanna pani widiyak yawana message in a bottle or something mata botale eka hari pani widiyak daala yawanna thibulane metan ten disalla and they said that's not a problem is it eka prashnak nae ne owata i said not now man ko nae dan mona karanna da so that so we go and i remember onna ida pase api yana mata mata kai they had high security etana vishaya sa me security stand on this stage onna man hitagen inna vedikave in the middle of this altar call me okkama me altaru kandwima mada and i remember the spirit of god speaks to me mata mata kai swami inwanse ge aapne mata kiyenawa and he says there's someone here who doesn't believe in me unwanse ge aapme kiyenawa metana inna maava vishwas karanna athi yamai but i'm going to heal their back oge pita suwa karanna yanawa and i believe they're going to surrender their life e wageema onwa de onge jeevithe swami inwanse metara genna yanawa so i said there's someone here that doesn't believe in jesus මං කිව්වා මෙතන ඉන්න කවුරු හරි යේසුස් වහන්සේව අදාන්න නැති but god says that he's going to heal your back දෙවියන් වහන්සේ ඔබව සුවපත් කරන්න යනවා and that's going to be a sign to you that what you believe is false and he is the truth ඔබ ඒ ඒ ලකුණ දැක්කම ඔබ දැනගනි මේක තමයි සත්‍යතාව කියලා i remember i said raise your hand මං කිව්වා අතුස්සන්න කියලා there was a lot of hands that went up ඒ වෙලාවේ අත් ගොඩක් ඉස්සුනා 
I wasn't told this till later. But those Satanists had showed up that night. They were sitting in the back uh, part of this atrium over here. And I said, God just healed your back. Test it right now. Well, the, the leader of this satanic coven had been in a car accident. He injured his back and never fully recovered and he was living with pain. So I said, God just healed your back, test it. So he's standing there, they told me, with about 50 people. And he just does this. Come on, you got to keep going. Don't go lower. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. I, 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 and he's shocked. God totally heals his back. And then I said, I said, if you just got healed, come down right now. This guy takes off running towards the stage. Well, the other 49 people decide to run after him. Because they think he's going to jump on stage and kill me. This guy starts running to the stage. I promise you an angel of the Lord is right here at the front row. This guy is running. And I, I think I saw this, but you understand this is a group, a massive group of people. This guy starts running down the row. And all of a sudden it feels like an angel just boom, pops him like this. And this guy just goes pow, just like that. And then the next guy. And then the next guy. And then the next guy. All 50 of them. Boom. Out of the power of God, just like that. Pow. Just like that. I didn't know any of this had happened. But there's thousands of people. So after the service. It was a powerful night. I'm walking back out to get in the van and go to my hotel. And I see this huge pile of stuff. And I said, what's that? And they said, Pastor Chris, you didn't hear? I said, hear what? They said, remember those people that were going to kill you? I said, yeah. They said, they were here tonight. I said, tonight? They said, yeah. You okay. said someone had an back injury. And this leader of the group had gotten in a car accident. And tonight, Jesus healed his back. And so he came down. And all the other 49 followed him. And they all gave their life to Jesus tonight. And when they... When they surrendered their life, they started taking out all of their weapons. They had sharpened sticks and knives. One of them had a gun. They had taken out all their charms and their witchcraft. They took out all their drugs, their heroin, their needles. And it was all one big pile right on the stage. They had a ring that they told me was made out of a bone, a human bone. And you, actually, it's on my Instagram. You can go see it later. But it had three skulls on it. And they would cast spells with this. But when they met the power of Jesus, all in one day, everything changed. Now listen, if Jesus can change a Satanist, he can change anybody in Sri Lanka tonight. If he can save a whole group of people, he can save your family your friends and your school. But tonight you need to decide can Jesus be lowered into your heart? It says, it's, he says, son, your sins are forgiven. You know what I love about Jesus? See, there's the difference between Jesus and the devil. Jesus says, son, your sins are forgiven. The devil, he knows your name, but he calls you by your sin. Jesus knows your sin, but he'll still call you by he your says, name. He says, son, your sins are forgiven. 
Tonight, I love that this word forgive them. It literally means to divorce, to send away. When Jesus says, Son, your sins are divorced from you. What he is saying to you and I tonight is that if your depression could love you better, he would let it if your pain could love you better he would let it if your past could love you better he would let it but can't nobody love you like Jesus is going to love you because he's well aware of your sin and your pain but he'll still call you by your name you're not that messed up guy you're a son you're not that broken woman you're a daughter if you're going to find out what you're carrying number one can Jesus be lowered into your heart tonight number two to find out what you're carrying you need to understand Jesus can't heal what you hide Jesus now I, I'm going to be completely transparent and I am totally okay with saying this but I, I've got to be honest I feel like your family, so I'm going to talk to you like your family. Is that okay? That's what I love about Sri Lankans. They have the biggest smile in the world. And they'll love you. It doesn't matter if you have all your teeth. It doesn't matter if you smell funny. They're just going to love you. I have to confess this. I do not like cats. I'm, I'm a dog lover. I am not a cat lover. I, I feel like cats were made with the extra that God had left over. They're, they're not really animals. They're, they're more like demons with hair. I just don't like cats. So I remember I'm driving out of, I'm driving out of my, my home. We had just had my oldest son. Our first child. He was a baby in the back. My wife and I were going to go have a nice meal together. It's a beautiful sunny day. I'm driving down the road. And all of a sudden, this cat comes in the middle of the road. Now in the United States, they teach you, you do not move for a cat. It's different in Sri Lanka because you have some things bigger than cats on the road. I remember driving and seeing an elephant. I'm going to wait for the elephant. I'm going to wait. Long time ago, I remember driving to the airport and there was a herd of cows on the freeway. I'm going to go ahead and wait. I'm going to go ahead and wait. But cats, no. You might even get extra points in heaven if you aim. I, that's, I mean, I don't know if that's biblical, but Pastor Cameron can research that. Um, I, I, so I'm driving, and I see this cat. Your boy is not moving. So I'm driving. This cat, comes into the road, and then jumps out of the road. Come on, guys. Come on, ready? 
I start driving. Nah, Mama Mama I don't move. Mama I don't move. Mama I say me. And I nail this cat. Mama nah, nah, not, 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 not just with one, one tire, but two tires. 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 And, and, I, and I'm like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I didn't have to see that. And she starts crying. And I'm like, come on, 100 points. Did, did you kill him? I, said, I, I, said, I, I hit that thing with two tires. That thing is dead. That thing is as flat as a string hopper. Okay? Are you sure? I said, baby, I'm not going to go back. She said, we have to go back. I said, I'm not going back. She said, no, we have to go back. Now, my wife is not from the bad area of town. I kind of am. There's one, thing, there's one thing you learn when you live in the bad area of town. You never go back to the scene of the crime. Crimes committed, you're gone. My wife does not know this. So she says, we have to go back. Can we go back, please? Can we go back? I said, baby, we not doing this. She said, please. So I turn around. I drive up on this cat. I'm telling you, this thing is as flat as a pampanan. Just pow, just like this. And I, re I remember, I said, look, it's dead. Because some of it's over there. And some of it's over there. And he just spread himself. And she, she said, well, you have to make sure. Get out of the car and go make sure. I'm like, babe. And she said, no, you have to make sure. So I said, fine. I get out of the car. Yep, I'm sure. This is either a pancake or it was a cat. She says, We'll find out whose it is. I'm like, babe, you don't understand how murder works. You don't kill something and then go bring it to somebody. But they have to know. So I said, I'm going to knock on this one door. This one door. So I knock on this door. I'm telling you, the meanest woman on the earth lived at this house. Knock on the door. And she, she answers the door and goes, What do you want? And I said, Hi. Hi. Do you know whose cat that is over there? She said, What happened? I said, Somebody hit it with a car. And she said, she said, is it dead? I'm like, yeah, I did it right. I mean, yeah. And she said, she said, well, it doesn't matter now. It's dead. I'm thinking, that's what I said. But tell that to my wife. So I told my wife. I said, this mean old lady said that it doesn't matter. She said, well, you can't, my wife says, you can't leave it in the road. I said, this is, I'm telling you, I thank God we had premarital counseling. 
ஒன்னு <laughs> 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 Wait wait a minute wait. Oh, oh, no, 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 that's not my cat. Yeah, 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 I'm like, "Ma'am!" Like, "Ma'am!" You scared me. My bike got. Enna, na pay the bone. She got in the van drove away. Yeah, gi ya. Avan vaagana the eduthu pona. I took the cat through in a trash can. Hey, kunu baadhe lala poosa. Kuppe thodile potam pudi. I went on my way. Na edure vaan pagapaudile sende. Have you ever done something that you wanted to hide it? Oba kavada yam de akala. Ninga oru kaathu seidu. Adhu olithu kolla paatha. All I wanted to do was hide this cat. Mata one une me poosa vaagana. Enna kuppe pune olikirathu. to hide what i've done man karapu varad hangan play nu sonnal olike ponadu that's exactly what happens ekai unade adha nadana karyam when you've got brokenness and pain in your life obage jeevithe kandima bidima tibuna adha yugal irukra poludu the only thing you want to do is hide it obage karan unade thamai hangan de vedanava it's what happened in the garden ekai une adha nadandathu eden thotathile adam and eve sin and they hid themselves adam sa eva paukal seidu adha olithukondargal when you and i did the same thing naan ningal ore karathu seidu we tried to cover it up can i tell you hiding things doesn't make you powerful hiding things makes you paranoid and powerless heal what you hide the scripture says that this house is full of religious leaders but in verse 18 it says and the power of god was there to heal these religious But who's the one that got healed? It was not these religious leaders. These are people that would study God's word day and night. These are people who would be in the temple day and night. These are people that would serve the Lord their entire life. That's why I'm not just talking to people who are not Christians. I'm talking to Christians in this room tonight. Cuz I know what it's like to hide things. These are the best of the religious of the day. And they say no one can forgive sins but God. That's what hiding does to you. It makes you religious. And it makes you blind. These religious leaders are so blind. They can't even recognize God when he's standing in front of them. So the Bible says that this man is lowered down. The Bible says that this man is lowered down. Bible ekino me manushya pahatra dhamma. Vedam solige the manushya ekile potar. The Bible says that this man is a paralytic. Bible ekino me manushya ansabag rogi ekile. Vedam solige the even mudavana irna. That's different than being fully paralyzed not able to walk. Then meka hari venasya ad sampurna me avidinna bari ekak. Avanu mulu nadaka mudiya oru manida. A paralytic is someone that at one time had full use of their body. Ansabag rogiya kaalayak tibuna hondata avidda. Avanukku nadaka mudiyum irundal pare nadaka mudiyadu. But over time they started to lose muscle function onge maans pesu durwala una and maybe even bone structure onge kattu durwala una and so they weren't paralyzed it's just they couldn't move eglang ansha bhaga roginilla hellende beruna avan nadakka mudiyadana marina you know i believe there was a moment in everyone's life 
mam vishwas kana hamogama jeevithe who are my talking to tonight at one time you had innocence in your life ekka velavakka obage jeevithe oba hari ahinsakai who are my talking to tonight at one time you had innocence in your but over time kaale avame neram varugira poludhu something was stealing it from you obagen e deval ivattuna ummadathilende avigal eduthu kollapadu at one point in your life you had total peace obage jeevithe ekka kaale samadhanam ithibuna ummade vaalkil oru kaalathile samadhanam irundathu but then over time e kaale avame andha kaalam sende piragu a relationship started to rob it from you e samay sambandha thaavaya obage samadhanam ikatta andha uravu ungade samadhanam eduthu potta maybe at one time you felt free obata nidhaasa labuna kaale ningal vidudaliyodu irundha naatkal but over time kaale avame nidhaas e nidhaas kaala mundu sundrathu eduthu potadu in addiction started to take it away from you obata veradi purudak nisa nidhaas nathi vuna ungalku playana palaka valagathinaale na kaariyam illamal ponadu can i lovingly ask you tonight mama premeng obaging illana ma anbodu kettukolugiren tonight don't hide it adha raatri hangande pa adha raatri veli adai maraikka venda tonight's the night that you get free me raatri nidhaas ven tonight's the night that you get whole me raatre sampurna ven tonight's the night that you get healed me raatre suela ban tonight's the night that you get peace me raatre samadhan ilaban that night is not coming e venadavasak nevei that's not going to happen when you're perfect that night is not coming e venadavasak nevei that's not going to happen when you're perfect oba sampurna unama nevei that's going to happen when you're broken oba kaduna unama nevei and you messed up that obage kadi medi oba suela ban nevei oba ge kadi medi can i tell you ma obade amakiyanna god is not in love with the future version of you swami nwanse balanne obage israthi benna ul alankar rupe nevei devana ode veli arangathi paarkkorolla he's in love with you right now nwanse prema karanne obata deng oba inna vidhiya ningal irukkira nerudhali aandavar ungale nesikkira god is not waiting for you to be perfect nwanse inna oba anga sampurna nakka ningal mulume adaigira varai avar kaathirukkorolla other gods will want you to be perfect ani devivaru inna oba anga sampurna nakka matthavar kadavul irukkrargal the god of the bible bible e devi amathidha aandavar he doesn't mind brokenness nwanse de kadicha kamanne avar udaindavargalukku priyojanam illai all throughout his பதவி <laughs> professor pastor chris mama professor pastor chris vende puluva nan or professor pastor chris a irukalam but i know what it's like to hide habe mam danno hangana hati ana enak theriyum olikira vidham i remember i was taken advantage of sexually when i was a 13 year old boy avrudu dahathune bi lingika aparayatada 13 vayadile paaliyal ille ipdi pettadana which led into an addiction to pornography eke mata e asabba deval balandada abasa paatchigale paatha or paiyan And then when I got married, Mama Vivaha Vuna, I thought, man, it, it won't, it, it, it'll get better. Mang hi tuwa ya sab pin tur rupa balne ke dem hoda be. Naat paate na ba sakari ke liye paate. Eka borua eka wedi vuna. Adu poyi adu. And then my wife, Peter was my mother. Who is a strong woman of God? Who is a strong woman of God? Yeah, Devi, I'm not saying that. Under the blood of the Lord. She never shamed me. Yeah, I'm not saying that. She never scolded me. She never scolded me. Not a bad thing. And yes, I will. Until one day, eka dava sa. She said we need to find the root of this. Ya kiwa apive ke mula hoya. Avaru sonnal idu aarambathe kandu pidika vendum. And I said I think I know what it is. Man kiwa mam danna mukadde kila mula. Na sonnen idu enandu theriyum. But I've never told anybody. Man kaatathe ke kila ne. Ya kiwa sollavillai. Because I wanted to hide it. Man heduve hanganda. Naan paathu nidhi maraippadarkku. I said I was molested when I was a 13 year old boy. Man kiwa avurdu 13 edi mata lingika athavara akkuna. Naan sonnen 13 vayadile naan paadikapatten. My wife looked at me. Mage baare maade sabala. Enude manave ne paatha. She said, "Well, I'm telling you that you're a healed 13-year-old boy." Yeah, kiwa. Oba then swear laba po aurudu dahatu ne lamai. I'm not addicted to pornography. I'm not addicted to pornography. I'm not addicted to pornography. I'm telling you in that moment. Man kino e malai. Something broke off of my life. Mage jivide yama kaduna. I had a pastor in my life that walked me through. Mata e nidasa kabuna. I had my wife that paid prayed me through. Mage baare mangu dusa yapne kara. And you're looking at a free man today. oba ada dakinne nidasuna manushya paakuradu vidudale adaindu oru manidane god can break years of addiction in one moment manasana pula one man baby makkada nu mudi appadi petta adimathil nu nimishathil illa maaka if you choose not to hide it oba hangande pa ningal marakka venda let me close out the service me de me vahana gama inda aaradhana ile jesus looks at this man and says son your sins are forgiven jesus wants your putre obage paapeta obade samavala guna jesus sonnarude paavam mannikapetta magane 
But he says one more thing to him. He says, Arise, take up your bed, and go home. Arise, take up your bed, and go home. I could tell him, I could understand why he says rise. And I could understand why he says go home. But why does he want him to take his bed? He says arise, take your bed and go home. I believe that I have an understanding. Maybe Maybe even what happened to this paralytic after he walked out of the house. Imagine being lowered. After someone cut a hole in someone's roof. And then you get healed. And now you're going to walk out. What do you say to the guy that owns the home? No, my bad. <laughs> Was it me? I used to be a paralytic. Remember? Can you imagine the speechless people in the room? As this guy is leaving the house, it's kind of like walking around in here. I'm sorry, excuse me. I'm sorry. Excuse me, sorry about the roof. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I would imagine the rest of the story went something like this. Let, let's say that this uh, that this man had a, a common name. Let, let's say uh, his name was Vasanta. So Vasanta is walking down the street. He's just been healed. Yes, well, and all of a sudden, hitty, hitty. he sees three or four people <laughs> that recognize him. <laughs> and and they, they say, Vasanta! You're walking! <laughs> Vasanta's like, I'm walking! <laughs> Are you walking? I've been walking. And they said, how? And he said, hold on, I'm going to come over there. They said, what happened? He said, i got to tell you a story. He said, you knew me, right? I used to be a paralytic, right? So I'm just laying there like a paralytic. Right? That's a great picture right there, right? He's laying right this. Oh, okay, he says, please. then four guys come and pick me up. <laughs> and they take me. Visanta, <laughs> did you know where they were taking you? <laughs> I didn't know. I'm a paralytic. <laughs> they said Jesus is in town. <laughs> and they were going to take me to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is here. <laughs> Jesus is at Peter's house right now. Yes, Pedro de Vitle Peregrin. So I remember we get there. And the house is full. We can't even get in. There's too many people. They say, Visanta, what'd you do? He said, My four friends. How many have that one crazy friend? How many have that one crazy friend? Borderline insane. You know it was this guy who came up with the idea. Let's cut a hole in the roof and lower him down. So they said they took you on the roof. This is like they took me on the roof. They lowered you down. They lowered me down. They said, What happened if you would have fallen? He said, I was already a paralytic. It wouldn't have hurt anyway. So I'm there in front of Jesus. You saw Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. I saw Jesus. Mama, you, saw Jesus. Jesus. You, you looked in his eyes. I counted how many hairs he had in his beard. That's how close I was to Jesus. He said, okay, what? He said, okay, what? let me tell you what he said to me. 
What did he say? He said, son, your oh. sins are forgiven okay. you. Jesus said, what? And then he said, arise, take up your bed and go home. Arise. The son, why does he want you to take up your bed? And I believe right here it hits him. He says, well, because this bed used to carry me. But now I carry it. I'm here to tell you tonight, Sri Lanka, you better start carrying something that's going to change this nation. I'm telling you, you can carry your pain. And let it lead a generation into healing. You can carry your, your past. And, and let it lead you and an entire generation to freedom. And question for you tonight. It's not just what are you carrying? My question for you tonight is what are, what's carrying you? Would you stand up with me tonight? There's two groups of people in this room. There are those of you you've been in the church you might even be a leader or a pastor but you're living with secrets and you can't seem to break the power of that pattern and you feel so dirty and so shameful. Because you're convinced God is angry with you. God is not mad. He is not furious. He is not a God who condemns. He has given every man and woman an opportunity to be saved. From eternal separation from your pain and your sin. What's carrying you tonight? Is it a drug addiction? Is it an addiction to pornography? Maybe it's something that happened in your past. I feel like there's someone in this room tonight that you have night terrors. You can't sleep at night because you have dark figures that come into your thoughts and into your room. You feel tormented and harassed. If you'll let Jesus heal that, if you'll let him be lowered into the roof of your life tonight, I promise you tonight, those things will stop. Maybe you have so much shame. Whatever it is, there's still freedom. There, there's a second group of people there's a group of people that you didn't grow up Christian there, there's not a Christian in your family but because you trusted a friend or you saw it on social media you decided to come tonight. Why, 
What's so different about the Christians? It's not anything different about us. It's about one man. His name is Jesus. Jesus. And he will set you free from all the hurt, pain, and sin in your life. You, you feel like this paralytic. You feel paralyzed in your life. You paralyzed by your past and your decisions. But tonight I declare to you that can change. He's a good God. The Bible says that it is the goodness of God that leads people to change their lives. He is not angry with you. The Bible says that this is not just a promise for tonight. But it's a love that lasts forever. You say, Chris, but I've done too much. You say, Pastor, if you knew my life. God wouldn't want me. God wouldn't want me. I know the Bible says this. That his mercy is new every morning. Do you know what new means? It means never been used and never been seen. God has so much mercy. God has so much mercy. He has enough to give new mercy on every day of the rest of your life and the rest of your friend's life. That's why the Bible says he's rich in mercy. He doesn't use the mercy of yesterday on today. If you're one of these two people, we want to pray with you tonight. I don't know where you're at across this world. But I am going to ask you to be honest. If you're one of these two people, on the count of three, I want you to get out of your chair and come meet me at the front. I want, to Listen, I want you to make up your mind right now. Do you want freedom? Do you want healing? Do you want peace and hope? Listen, tell the friend next to you and say, come down with me. I don't want to do it by myself. Would you come down with me? Come on, please come with me. I'm going to count to three. One. Come on, make up your mind. Two. Tell your friend. Three. Come on down. Come on down. Come down. Please come down. Today is that day. We'll wait for you to come down. Come on, tonight is that night. We'll wait. We'll wait. It's time for you to be free. It's time for you to be a child of God. Come on. We're going to It's time tonight. Over me, your face. 
tonight everything's going to change for you. I want everyone up here at the front to look at me. I know what this decision does to your life. All the pain and all the paranoia all the sabotage and the betrayal broken off of your life but tonight you're surrendering you're surrendering all of your perversion <laughs> But if you came with the church, I want you to go tell your pastor or your leader what you did tonight. Because you're not supposed to live the Christian life alone. And when you testify, it means that people are going to come to help you make sure that stays real. Those who are in the front, tonight's the night you surrender. I just, can you take your hand and put it on your heart? and the rest of my church family would you pray together with us Swami Vahansa, Oba Vahansa Eta, Mage Jeevite Barakarami. Swami Vahansa, Mankalavu, Sielu Pape Kata, Sielu Napura Kata, Samavu Manava. Jesus Vahansa, Adha Davase, Mamatir Nea Gandava, Mage Atiten, Eliatenda. Swami Vahansa, Obage Darukamata, Obage Karunavata, Mava Baraganda, Mage Jivite, Sharpin, Papin, Mava Mudavanta, Jesus Swans again Amin, Obahans again Darwek winter, Mame Davasa Kapavimi, Amen.